Welcome to this, the fifth in a series of six films focusing on playful parenting in the pandemic. We call this episode Weathering the Storm, and in it we're going to focus on the importance of nurture and the healing power of touch. So, Joanne, when we talk about the healing power of touch, what are we referencing? What are we speaking about? We're really talking about that deep pressure, not the kind of pressure now that you'd be leaning in and it's sore, mm. but not that light fluffy, that deep proprioceptive touch and mm. why that is so therapeutic and healing mm. and is so strengthening and impactful in relationships is because proprioceptive touch sends a message to the skin mm -hmm. to cue the brain that you're okay, you're okay. safe, you're secure. Mm. And what we know is that loving, gentle, caring touch like this between mm. two trusted people within a relationship yeah. actually lowers the cortisol levels that we might be feeling, which is part of how we get so stressed and anxious mm. and can trigger and activate those happy hormones, those love hormones of oxytocin in the body and the brain. Yeah. So it's really, really important. Mm. I think particularly at the moment when we're all getting a little bit touch wary mm. and don't be touching and limiting the hugs. Mm. So those of us who can still hug and be close to each other yes. really need to look at playful ways to embed this into our parenting. Okay. And so I suppose in, in hearing that and, and appreciating how it is that we, we might consider that, we of course we think of massage and facials and, 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 and in a sense we, we understand something of that, that our bodies ask for and, yeah. and we meet that need uh, in an ordinary sense. But I suppose how does that sit then with respect to um, the parent-child relationship? Why is it so important to that relationship? I think it is because it's about really instilling that sense of felt safety, mm -hmm. that message between a parent and a child that you are deserving of good care, you are worthy of good care, and I am here to do that for you. Mm -hmm. And it really responds to the trust in the relationship. Yes. And in that way, I feel safe and reassured and calmer. Mm. And again, we know, looking in the history of all things stressful, is there anything more irritating than somebody saying, calm down? I mean, it will have the exact opposite effect. Yes. So we're looking at playful ways now of doing that message mm. rather than speaking it. Yeah. If we know that our children are touchy, anxious, on edge, what are the practical nurture-based ways to affect that change okay. using play? Yeah. And so what I'm thinking here is, I'm going to go straight into yeah, this actually, is we've been using our hand sanitizer, important to say that just mm -hmm. before we did this video, and please do that at home as well, mm -hmm. but we're going to take some lotion. Mm -hmm. And what I'm going to do with my lotion is, I am going to put some on my hand like this, mm -hmm. and I am just going to take your hand, Janet, mm -hmm. and mine, and I'm going to have a look for any special marks. There could be any little ouchies or hurts you might have had, any freckles, anything that's just special to you, I'm going to notice it. Mm -hmm and take care of it. And I'm just going to rub that lotion anywhere I might even see, particularly with all the hand washing and sanitizing, yes. some dry patches. Yeah. I'm gonna talk about your thirsty skin and really give that some loving, gentle care. And then rub that in mm -hmm. like that. And you can feel that I'm giving you that proprioceptive, yes. like it's deep pressure, I'm yeah. pulling on your fingers, but not in a way that's, I hope, hurtful no. anyway. No, because right. now our hands are quite lotiony, mm -hmm. I'm gonna go straight from taking care of those bits of your mm -hmm. hands into a game called Slippery Slip. Okay. So my hands are slippy and lotiony. Mm -hmm. I take your hands and we sit opposite each other mm -hmm. and we're going to pull, 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 pull. Oh, I'm going to slip away. Mm -hmm. And the object is that the child is going to try to hold on to the parent mm -hmm. and the parent is going to slip, 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 slip. And it's playful and fun. Yeah. But what you're getting is that pull mm -hmm. on the muscles, that proprioceptive yeah. input, the tactile transfer of the lotion from mm -hmm. my hand to yours yes. and that skin-to-skin -skin contact. Mm -hmm. So you're actually getting heaps of nurture in there. Yeah. For slightly older children, a mm -hmm. nice way of doing a nurture-based activity that is engaging beyond this, because this is really suitable, yeah. I would say, for the 10 years and under. Yeah. So when we're looking at that more 11 plus age, yeah. it's something like, Thumb wrestling. I think oh, most yeah. of us know how to thumb wrestle, but I'm going yeah. to do a little reminder just in case. Mm -hmm. So you take your fingers like this and you curl your hand, lie your thumbs down, and we go one, two, three, four. I declare a thumb war. Five, six, seven, eight. Try to keep your thumb straight. Then we push our thumbs up against each other. The object is I'm going to try hold your thumb down. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. You're going to try. 
to hold mine down. And we all, as parents, need to watch our own competitive streaks there <laughs> because your child really should win two out of three rounds. So you can do this hand, then do your less dominant hand, then two hands together. And what you find by doing this in a really engaging, playful way is we've been holding hands for a number of minutes. If you do yeah. three rounds in real life, mm -hmm. you're looking at seven, ten minutes of hand holding. Uh -huh. We can increase the nurture and challenge in this activity mm -hmm. by making your hands even slippier with lotion yeah. and doing a slippy thumb wrestle because it genuinely is yeah. harder. Yeah. But I'm getting that extra nurture with the tactile transfer there. Yeah. So there's a number of activities that involve touch, but what you're going to notice is that touch is always a logical part of the activity. It's not touch for touch sake. Yeah. It's touch that's built in in a playful doing way, and that's why it's so effective. Yeah. I suppose one of the other things that we tend to have flying around the house is cotton balls. And ah. I know that that's, uh, you know, there, there's some nice nurturing um, activities that can be done with this. Just take a little cotton ball, and again, just like I did the lotion noticing of dry patches yes. or whatever on your hand, I can take this mm. and I can just give you a hand massage. Mm. And again, you're noticing the type of pressure I'm using yes. is again that proprioceptive, reassuring touch. Yeah. And I can turn around like this. What we, you can also do is take that cotton ball and do a full face massage on your child as well, going all around their face, their nose. I could also invite you to close your eyes mm -hmm. and this time without peeking, tell me where am I touching? My wrist, my thumb, my shoulder, my chin, my hand. Maybe. And so on. So you do a variety of touches and your child is closing their eyes and just focusing on the touch, which is a really effective way to get them out of their heads and mm -hmm. all of the little uh-oh feelings and worries that might be going on up there yes. and into the now moment focusing on healing touch. Yeah. It's very effective. Yeah. It really is. Sometimes it's the most simple things that can be so effective. Yeah. And we've titled this one Weathering the Storm, but you also have uh, an activity called Weather Report. Weather Report mm. is basically um, a modified massage for children. I mm. tend to find massage quite an adult word and mm. prefer to do Weather Report when doing this with yeah. children. I'm going to show on your arm just yes. because it's going to work better on video. Mm. But with your child, what I would suggest is you invite them to put their back to you. And you can either do this over their t-shirt or over their pajamas at night or on their back skin to skin. Mm -hmm. And what we're gonna find is I'm gonna make it rain. And I'm just drumming my fingertips up and down. That would be on your back. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna bring in some thunder, which is doing some chopping. And again, now I'm not hammering that down on you, yeah. but it's a, you feel that kind of input. Yes. I'm doing this grabbing as if you were kind of kneading dough, really, yeah. motion mm -hmm. for clouds. Mm -hmm. Clouds and wind. You can lightly blow mm. and move your hands side to side. And then you're going to bring in sun circles using the palm of your hand. Big, warming, mm. reassuring sun mm. circles that get rid of all the rain. No more thunder, no more clouds, mm. just nice warm sun. Mm. And that's such a beautiful activity. And I guarantee once you start doing that with your child, you're going to get weather requests every yeah. single day. <laughs> So we've, I suppose we've, we've done a lovely little piece there around touch as yeah. a sense. And I suppose what I'm kind of uh, hoping to do now is just open up a few more creative ideas that we can use at home. Again, you know, being able to go to the cupboards and, and, and get a few bits and pieces and uh, really just to give you a, a, a few ideas and different things that you can do and the way in which you can support your child to develop opportunities for kinds of sensory um, input and exploration um, and, and create a little something. So in the first instance, I just have these two things. You just have a regular standard jam jar, you know, that is often knocking around and a, a water bottle. And so you can probably see here, both are um, snow globes, similar to that. Gorgeous. And so, you know, they have, uh, uh, in the traditional snow globey way, <laughs> they have some nice uh, glitter and sequences contained within them. And all kinds of different um, objects. Butterfly shapes and yeah, stars. Exactly. This one here has a, a few kind of added bits. So I suppose there we're thinking about the way in which we're tending to the visual, you know, the pleasant uh, experience of seeing things moving. There is a, a it's a, it offers a calming sense and that kind of fluidity of water. And, um, and of course, it can often be used as an opportunity for a little bit of space and time out, you know, 
a reflective space for a child, um, but also it has that naturally soothing kind of qualities to it. Uh, this one here, again, you've got the sound of the water, which mm -hmm. and, and then the opportunity to be able to become physically activated mm -hmm. and engaged with, with, the, um, with the bottle itself. I have some elastic bands here that are along here, so they, they help and support with grip, but they also offer opportunities just to be able to kind of fidget and, mm -hmm. uh, and play with it. And again, you're getting that contrast between the smoothness of the bottle and then the rubber grip here. I've added um, a nice fluffy pipe cleaner to the top. So again, we're looking at another sensation there, another form of touch sensation. And again, inside we have buttons, we have sequences, we have a little man with a smiling face um, and, and some more glitter. And, and again, just another uh, little thing that you can make at home. Um, here I have another bottle, this one, and uh, this one's a glass bottle. It's a little bit weightier, it's, it's heavy. What I like about this one is that it also is something that now can be used on the floor. So while we might think about this being something that can be shook and shaken, this can be rolled and it's filled full of coloured rice. And the rice itself, um, it's quite easy to colour. You'll find all of the instructions on, on how to do so uh, in the supporting material that we have. But what we have contained within this bottle, and why we call it a treasure bottle, is because we have buttons, we have keys, we have uh, little glass bottles, we have little love heart shapes. It's like a little treasure trove, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Yeah. And really what it offers and affords is the opportunity to be able to kind of have a game of hide and seek and to use this as a means of, of being able to see what can be found. So in a sense, you can prescribe an activity with a child where you say, how many hearts can you find in this? Can you see how many different colour buttons that you have? So it becomes an activity that you can make in that kind of traditional creative sense. But it's also something that kind of looks quite pretty, that can sit on a, on a shelf and not in use, but that also becomes a kind of focused and structured activity when you be, might be looking for Also, it would something. be so calming because, again, I find all of my focus is on the bottle, the yes. rice, the colours, the movement, and now you've given me a task, find the hearts. And yeah. again, I'm intensifying my focus. Yes. So actually a really effective way to calm me down in yes. doing rather than saying why. Absolutely. I'm picking up again on the rice using more materials that you'll find in your store cupboard at home. <laughs> um, there's a bit of a DIY, DIY frenzy at the minute, but one of the things that most people can have at home is something like a painting tray. But of course you could also use a serving tray, mm -hmm. a baking dish, a basin that you might have at home. And so what we've included here is the coloured rice again. So you're getting that in this time, you know, there we were using that visual sense of exploration. Now we're getting into it. <laughs> now we're physically sinking the hands into the rice. Yeah. So we're getting that sensory experience again. But in this, I just have lots of different objects. I just have little, small little toys. Again, some buttons, some, you know, sequences and, and, and bits and pieces that you'll find at home. And here the objective really is to be able to allow your child the time to have that physical sense of the sensation and, and immersing their hands within the rice, but also again incorporating the game and the go-seek aspect to it. So there's a delight in the discovery of, ooh, look what I found and dig again and look what I now found. Yeah. I think that would keep kids entertained for yeah. certainly. And one of the An things that uh, the, one of the things that I would do with this is that I is sometimes you might you might only have you know, say you have a button for instance, you might use the tray and you know the child looks away, you hide the button and then they go and try and find it. You know, so you can again reduce the, the kinds of and the number of materials that you might have sure. within the sound, the sound, but play it again and again. And it's one that groups of children can play together. I yes. That's what I like about that. Is yes. They can all dig and try and find their own little treasures within it. Yeah. So if you're parenting maybe three or four children at home and you're looking at that's great, but I need something for them all to do together, I think that's a really yeah. super one. So here I have a nice little colourful bowl. Uh, and these are, you know, a technical term, or at least one that I use is squidgies. <laughs> and, um, and these have a, a couple of, a number of different fillings. So these are just balloons that, you know, you might have knocking around in that drawer that everybody has in the kitchen that has all kinds of things. Um, and here we have three different versions. Of course, you can use anything and everything to fill a balloon and that will give a different sensation. 
This one here is a combination of um, corn flour and hair conditioner. And yeah. as you can smell, there's too. a really intense smell, in this instance coconut, um, but it also has quite um, a kind of a, a, a squidgy feeling, a very squashy uh, feeling, but of course it's contained within the balloon, so it's without the messiness. Of it's the very regulating, I feel mm. like I can sink my thumb in and then it'll bounce back out, I could do that over and over again. This yes. is very regulating and yeah. relaxing. This one here is... Um, it's a, it's a little less squish, squishy like, um, but this one is uh, our chia seeds. Mm. These were lurking in the back of the cupboard, and, <laughs> um, but they offer a, a different kind of sensory experience again. You squash, it tends to hold its form a little bit more. It's not as kind of slightly liquidy as the I other one. I feel I have to give this a, a harder squeeze. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And, and then when you do push it, you get that feeling, you can feel the grains, you know, you can feel the seeds between yeah. your fingers. Um, and of course, you can use any kinds of seeds, seeds or beans or pulses. Or salt for that kind or of sand. Exactly. Yeah. And we have some uh, salt ones here. The salts hold their form, again, much more. You can actually squash this right down or, you know, as you had suggested, you can use it for your thumbprint, you know, or a handprint. Um, and perhaps a game that you might uh, do with it is that you could take an impression of your elbow, elbow your, you know, shoulder. The, Chin. Exactly. And then, and perhaps, some, you know, the other member of the family or the, or the child and the parent just guesses what that is, you know. Some lovely ways of using those, but yeah. they're very regulating. Yeah. So have a look at our little extra, our series of extra movies, the creative extras, where we will show you how to make these and some of the other uh, sensory activities that we've uh, had and, and have fun.